Hello. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to easily encrypt, that is, protect your computer, whether it's a desktop machine or if it's a laptop, using free and open source software called Disk Cryptor. So I've put a link in the description which will take you to this page where you can hit the download button and then you can download the installer. There is the source code but that is really only for developers that's of absolutely no use whatsoever to an end user. So use the installer and once you have that downloaded, I've got it on my desktop here, you just double click it, run give it admin permission and we hit next accept the agreement you can check that at your leisure next 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 and next and then install it's very quick install and then we have to reboot the computer for it to install the driver so let's go ahead and reboot Okay, so now we've rebooted and we have a shortcut on the desktop. If for some reason you don't have the shortcut on the desktop, you click the start menu, go to all programs, and you'll find disk crypto, and it's right there. So we click that, give it admin permissions, and this works differently to TrueCrypt, where this seems to have lower level access, so you have to reboot during or after the install but then to do the actual encryption you don't have to do a, an excessive amount of reboots so if you want to encrypt your computer like the actual where your windows is if you look here you'll find sys this is you typically your c drive and that's where windows is installed so to encrypt this we just click it and then hit encrypt if you want it to work with as little impact on speed as possible leave this on AES if you want an extremely good algorithm go with serpent AES um, is the advanced encryption standard and there were many different algorithms in the running to get the position of AES the one that won AES was Rindal and the reason why it won is because it was more efficient in lower grade hardware. So for hardware and key cards and things, it worked a little better, more efficiently than any of the others. However, Serpent had the highest security margin of any of the algorithms. So AES for speed and Serpent for maximum security. So I'm just going to go with AES. And... In order to have things completely secure, you don't want to leave any previous trace of anything that was on that drive or on the partition. So if we just select this option here, the second one in the list, hit next. Now this is the drive that will be needing to be booted from and you will know which one because it says boot. So just select that and hit next then you want to come up with a password so I'm going to use a simple one you should use as complicated as you would like okay so hit OK and that's it now it's encrypting so what we need to do now is we need to click on tools go to config bootloader click up here and go to ISO bootloader image and then we need to save it somewhere so I will put it the system is going to be a little slow right now because it's actively encrypting everything on the system it's not slow when you're using the system but when you're initially doing that encryption process it really slows everything down so save this on the desktop as loader and then hit create loader that will create the file so there it is it's telling us it's successfully created and now we can hit change config and we're able to change little aspects 
of how this works. So the way that I have told this C drive, the system partition, I've told it to encrypt just using the password. So by default, you don't need to change any of these settings. So now that we've created it, we can just hit cancel on here and then right click the ISO that we've just made. It will be called loader. And then burn the disk image. You just put a DVD or a CD in the drive and then hit burn and there it will burn it to a disk. So if for any reason the bootloader that is on the hard drive is corrupted, you can just put the disk in, boot the system to that, type in your password and boom, it will just boot up. And you can change the password anytime. Once it's finished doing the initial encryption, you would just click C drive, hit tools, and then hit change password. And then you could change the password for that. If you want, you can also encrypt the boot partition. The thing that you have to remember is both of these, the boot and the system, have to have the exact same password. So I'm going to hit encrypt on this. AES. Okay. Okay. Hit OK. And since this is only 100 megabytes, this one's doing it very quickly. Again, you always use this option when you're doing your main system because that's very important. Otherwise, there'll be past traces of all of your files. So when it's completed, you'll see it looks like this where it says mounted. Now, if I click on C drive, you can clearly see this is still in the process of being encrypted and depending on the speed of your drives and um, what else is going on on the computer like if you've got updates running or you know you're browsing it could be quick or it could be slow also the size of your drive obviously will determine how much is necessary to be encrypted so I'm going to pause this and come back when it's completed so now it's finished and you can see that both the system drive, which is C, and the boot, which is volume one, they're both mounted. This means that they are successfully fully encrypted. And in order to show you what it will look like now, I'm going to reboot the system. So now we're at the enter password screen. And now Windows boots up. And it really is just as simple as that. There's no other information really necessary to be able to just encrypt the C drive, get everything secured and have it work. Now, what I'm going to show you additionally is how to change the password and also how to use a key file for the encryption for your uh, drives because whereas TrueCrypt what it does is when you burn the what they call the rescue disk for TrueCrypt that has it's it's very specific for one particular system that's been encrypted Whereas uh, with drive, sorry, disk cryptor, it's more generic. So therefore, if you just are using only a password, it will work for any system as long as you have the right password for that particular system. So if I load up disk cryptor. Now, if I go to remember, though, Whenever you change a password, you need to change it on all of the system and boot partitions. Otherwise, it, you won't be able to boot up. So let's click C, go to Tools, Change Password. So you put in the current password. 
and then so you've seen how the password part works so I'm going to show you just the other aspect which is using a key file now the difference between the two is that using a password you need to have the password whereas using a key file that's built in to the boot up so if you were to use a key file the best way would be to make sure you remove any bootloader from the actual drive itself which I'll show you in a minute and to burn a copy of the loader that's been burned to DVD and use that to boot up so to do a key file you tick this go to key files generate a key file so I'll save it and it says do you want to add it to the key files list I'll say yes okay so now we've got no password and we've got a key file so I hit OK the password is successfully changed so what I shall do is the same thing for this other one change password put the old password in use key files hit key files this time I've already made the key so I need to use the exact same key so I'll hit add file scroll down to key file and add that hit OK alright so the passwords have been changed what I need to do now is to export a new copy of this loader with the right settings in it and remove the old one so if we go to tools hit config bootloader and on this little drop down list here we'll go with ISO boot image and we'll use a new file name so I'll call this loader key file needed hit save and then hit create loader now the loader has been created and now I can configure it with the correct settings for the way we have the drive set up now using key files so hit change and then we need to go to authentication now the way it's set up by default is just a password but right now we're not actually using a password so if you click this you'll see there's options you've got a password and a key file or just a password or only the key file itself so if we go embedded boot auth key file and click that all the rest of these options are disabled because that's only for using a password so let's hit down here config embedded key file and we need to add that same key file into this bootloader okay then hit save changes and go to volume 1 config bootloader and we need to click these now look if I click on hard disk 1 it says install loader that means it isn't there already so that's fine so we click hard disk 0 it says remove loader that's what we want so if I hit remove loader hit yes that's been removed now from the hard drive because it was incorrect anyway if we wanted to we could put the real loader in there by installing a copy of the loader with the right key file but since we're only using a key file it would work just as if it wasn't encrypted because it would boot up and go straight into Windows so right now we're going to make it so that we need to have this disk and remember to burn the disk you right click go to burn disk image put the disk in the drive and hit burn and then keep it safe so this particular um, image of the disk is very specific to systems that are encrypted using this actual key file whereas the original one will work with any system as long as you happen to know the password for that particular system so just be aware of the differences between them so now that that's done I'm going to reboot the system and show you how it looks 
um, so you can get a, an idea of how it works. So if I go ahead and reboot, Now, when I try to boot up now, it's it's as if the system is just dead because everything's encrypted and there's nothing that tells the system how to work. So what I need to do is to boot from CD and now it just boots up magically because the CD that's in the drive right now, is it's got all the key file built into it that's necessary. And remember, the way I set it up, I only required the key file. So, you can either require a password that everyone has to know. You can instead require a key file. So, the only way someone's going to boot that computer up is to have the actual disk in their hand, the DVD or the CD. Put that in and it will let them boot. Anyone. All they need is the disk. Or you can require both the password and the key the actual disk that you made that's got the key built into it. So you have many different options of setting this up, but it's very easy to do and very powerful. So this disk crypto is a nice free and open source solution to be able to do system level encryption in an easy way. So hopefully you found this useful. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you on the next video. Thank you.